Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this is Chung here. So today, uh, let's take a look at today's daily challenge problem uh, number six hundred and ninety-six. Count binary substring. You know, even though this one is, is marked as an easy problem, I still like to briefly talk about this problem because it's it's not a, like very traditional easy easy problem. It still requires you requires a little bit of observations, you know. So basically, you basically are given like a string S, right? And your task is to count the number of non-empty contiguous, contiguous substrings that have the same number of zeros and ones, right? And and all the zeros and ones uh, in, the, in the substring are grouped consecutively. And substrings that occur multiple times are counted the number of times they occurred. So what what does it mean? For example, we have this one. We have zero zero one one zero zero one one. Right. So the answer is six. So why do we have six? We have this is one right. This is a one substring because both zero and one, they are one. And this is the second one, right? Zero. So from this substring, both the count are two, right? And same thing for for the, for the, for the one, one, zero, zero. This is also another one. This is also another one, right? And same thing for this one. This is another one. This is another one. That's why we have six in total. So, and the constraints is like uh, 50,000, right? I mean, a brutal force way is what we simply just try to I mean, enumerate all the substrings, right? right? And for, for each substring, we're gonna count, count their, count the zero and ones, right? And then we, we check each of the strings. But obviously, with this kind of uh, constraints here, right? So that, the brutal force one will definitely TLE. So which means that we need to find a like better better solution, right? But how can we how can we do it? How can we find that uh, a pattern so that we can reduce the time complexity? Mm. So at the beginning, I was thinking about uh, this one seems like a stack. Maybe I, we can try to use use a stack. So basically, every time uh, we see if the current current uh, character or current number is, is different as the ones on the top. And then we know, okay, we, we find the pair, right? We find a pair and then the, uh, and then we'll just pop that one out, right? So when, but then, but then that, uh, then this zero, zero and one, one works, right? But, but here we have another zero, zero, this, this, these two zeros also need to be paired with this this two ones. If we use stack, you know, these two ones will not will, will not be in in the stack. Regardless, right? And so, which means that we have to find uh, we have to uh, change that logic a little bit. Basically, you know, every time when we have like a different one, right? When we have a di different one, we uh. We can still use the stack, basically, you know. If they are the same, right? We just push in, push it into the stack, and when they are when they are the different, you know, we'll basically uh, pop that thing, pop that that uh, the number from the stack. But that will also cause another problem because you know, you know, for this one one zero zero, they are they're fine, they are okay. But if if we have this kind of three zeros at the beginning, right? And then we basically we push three zeros in the stack, and then we we have two ones, and then we pop two zeros, two zeros out, and then we still have one zeros left in the, in the stack. So basically, you know, what I'm trying to say is that you know, the stack may not be a proper uh, data structure to use here. Instead, you know, what we can do is that we can see, as you guys can see, so every time, you know. As, since we need to find the pairs, right? I mean, it's not pairs, the groups, 
that have identical have the same count zero and ones, it means that you know it has to be either zero one or one zero. Right? It it cannot it we don't need to worry about this scenario. You know, it has to be a a zero on the left or one on the right or or the other way around. We, there's no point to consider th this one, you know, because this one is separate, right? Basically, right. This this one is also a valid one, right? But you know, this is because you know we have a this condition here. You know, all ones and zeros. All zeros and ones are grouped consecutively, which means that this zero one zero one does not consider as a valid answer. If we look at uh, example two here, you know, we have one zero one zero one, you know, so the, there are four substrings: one zero zero one, one zero, and zero one, right? So this one zero one zero does not count as a valid one because the ones and zeros they're not grouped consecutively. They are separate. They're they're split uh they're split by each other, right? By uh, by adding a zero in between. That's why you know we don't need to work, consider this this scenario. So we can just simply just use like a count, right? I mean in this case, let's say we have three zeros in the end, at the beginning. So in in this case, all we need, all we care is, is the like the current consecutive count, right? For the current numbers, you know. In this case, you know, at the beginning, we have three zeros, right? We have three three zeros, and then now, and then we we have two ones, right? And then we have two ones. So what does this one mean? It means that you know, previously we have three uh zeros, either zero or one, it doesn't really matter. But now we have a another two different numbers. So between three and, and two, we have what? We have two pairs, right? That's why the answers can be, can be two at the beginning, right? And then we just simply discard this one because we know, so now, now the, the left side becomes a two. Now we just simply need to uh, con count the new right side, which is this two here, right? It's another two here. So now this one, minimum between two and two is also two, right? So that's why we have another two here. And then we discard, we discard this one. Now the uh, the left side is also two, right? Now we simply check this side, is also two. That's why that's how we get the total six. So we simply just uh, we keep we maintain like a previous previous count, right? And then for the current one, we we count the current one until uh, until the next one is, is different, and then we just keep uh, comparing the minimum between those the previous count and the current count. That's gonna be the uh, that's gonna be the the new pairs we find. Cool. So let's start coding then. So the answer is gonna be zero, right? We have a pre count equals to zero, right? And then I'm going to have like an n, oh, actually there's an n equals the length of s. So while i is smaller than n, right? Mm. So the current count, right? The current count will be will be starting from one because this uh, one letters uh, stands for one, right? And then we, I just uh, move this current cursor forward until the next one is different, right? And s i is equal to the s i plus one, right? If that's the case, we think we increase the current count, right, by one. So the, the this current count can stand, uh, can stand for either zero or one. Doesn't really matter, right? Because we know as long as the pre previous, because we know the previous the previous count and the current count, there are two different numbers. And we increase i by one, right? And then I simply check if the pre-count is greater than zero, right? Because we, we can we need to check this because you know because at the beginning, you know, once we 
count this part, you know, there's no uh, counterpart to be able to uh, so to to form like a string. That's why we do a pre-count because at the beginning the pre-count is equal to uh, is equal to zero. So if the pre-count is greater than zero, it means that you know we have we have a pair. So the how many pairs we have here, or how many substrings, it's going to be the minimum of the pre-count and the current count, right? And after this one, we update the pre-count uh, with the current count, right? And then don't forget to increase the, the, the cursor by one, right? And then we return the answer. Yep, so if I run the code, yeah, oh, I forgot to define the I here. Some typo here. Current, current count. Yeah. Cut count. Okay. All right. So submit. Cool. So pass. Right. I mean, so this one, the time complexity for this one, obviously, is O of n, right? Because we only traverse the stream once, and then we use like the uh, we only use this one variables, uh, define like pre count to track the previously previous uh, the count for the previous uh, number. So that's why you know the time complexity is this one and the space complexity is O of one, right? Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, even though it's an easy problem, but you know the pattern, it seems a little bit seems in interesting. You know, I hope you guys like uh, enjoy watching this video. And yeah, that's it. And yeah, thank you guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.